In this video, we will take a closer look at the external rotation lag sign to diagnose full thickness rotator cuff tears. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Assessing a rotator cuff tear that is functionally impeded is an essential part of your assessment. The test might inform you of the need for ultrasound imaging to confirm the tear or to refer the patient to an orthopedic surgeon. The test was originally described by Hertel et al. in 1996 in a paper where several other tests were presented. Castoldi et al. in 2009 found a sensitivity of 56% and a specificity of 98% for isolated lesions of zone 3 and 4 of supraspinatus seen here. This means that patients without tears in this zone are correctly excluded with a negative test. Do note that these values are biased by the sample. In this case, the patients were recruited via a surgeon's office, meaning that the sensitivity and specificity will be inflated compared to other settings. However, the updated meta-analysis of Hedges in 2012 included four more studies and recommends the use of this test for diagnosing infraspinatus tears. The systematic review by Hermann et al. in 2013 showed that the positive predictive value of this test was the highest among all included tests for diagnosing a full tear. This is why we rate this test as having moderate clinical value. The patient is positioned at an examination couch facing away from you. You gently bend the elbow to about 90 degrees, while the shoulder is slightly elevated at around 20 degrees in the scapular plane, positioned in full external rotation. Then you slightly reduce the range about 5 degrees to prevent false positives due to elastic recoil. You instruct the patient to actively hold the external rotation while you release the wrist, providing only support at the elbow. A positive sign is observed when there is a noticeable lag or drop in the angular position. A word of caution, supraspinatus tears can occur in different patterns. Partial thickness tears may manifest on the joint side, the bursal side, or within the tendon itself. Full thickness tears can involve the anterior or posterior part of the tendon, or both. Additionally, tears can result in cleavage or delamination. In some cases, larger tears may extend into the infraspinatus and teres minor tendons, or anteriorly into the subscapularis tendon. This complexity makes the test harder to interpret, so use it with caution. All right, that's it for this video. If you are new here, consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up for new videos. Check out the links in the video description and make sure to follow us on social media. For more clinical pearls, research reviews, freebies and blog posts, visit physiotutors.com. I am Max for Physiotutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.